mechanism by which flying saucers flit around the atmosphere, as reported by thousands of witnesses, must be found in one of four general categories. They're not real. This first possibility is the one favored by the scientific community. The phenomenon does not exist and is the product of idiocy, chicanery, and misperception. In the view of mainstream science, this is a psychological rather than a physical problem. I'm not going to comment on this category of possibilities because there is no physics involved. And so, if this is indeed the case, I would cease to be interested in the subject. However, I won't throw out this category as untenable, because none of the other three categories appears to be any more tenable. So maybe hundreds of people, separated by hundreds of meters and not knowing one another, all of a sudden see and report the same weird thing at the same time and in the same place, a totally disconnected mass hallucination. Or maybe this is some form of holographic projection. That would be in this category too. Unreal. They are real, but our universe is not. This is the category favored by most people. I mean like at least half the adults on the planet. Somebody programmed a computer in their universe and made us in a kind of Matrix movie. They don't have to program atoms, they just program us. So we feel, hear, smell, touch, and see as a person. And if we investigate our physical reality, they just supply sufficient detail so that we don't discover the hoax. This other being who programmed our universe is, of course, God, who generally supports the laws of physics as he has written them, but can break in and make changes as he sees fit. Thus, UFOs don't have to obey the laws of physics because they are outside of the program and just break in to visit and do strange stuff. I'm not going to investigate this category either, for the same reason. There's no physics involved, just programming, so I'm not interested. And we can't gather any data anyway to perform any experiments to prove the point. It's all unprovable and close to experiment, unless they allow us in at the programming level. They're real and still obey the known laws of physics. This is a more interesting category. We can hypothesize according to what we know and can speculate into areas we don't know too much about. This is also the category favored by a few scientists and other responsible people. We'll take a look at some general principles here to see if it's at all probable. They're real, but our known laws of physics are superseded by more basic laws that we don't yet understand. This is my personal preference. If there is some basic thing we don't understand about the world that would enable us to bypass the main laws of physics as we presently understand them, I'd like to know that. So this is where I'll spend most of this video. Just remember, I'm not throwing away anything until and unless the truth is actually found. And, as always, I reserve the right to be 100% wrong about anything whatsoever. Everyone should consciously reserve this inalienable right, because to do so acknowledges one's own fallibility. Since I'm rejecting, for investigative purposes, categories 1 and 2, we are, in effect, accepting that our universe is real, there are fundamental laws of physics which we know, and possibly a few we don't know. Here's what we know from observer reports. The most common shapes are disks, oblate and prolate spheroids, cylinders and triangular or boomerang flat thingies. However, any shape is possible, though mostly they are radially symmetric rather than bilaterally symmetric. They can hover silently, accelerate rapidly, rotate end over end, upside down, stop car motors, turn invisible, go faster than the speed of sound without causing a sonic boom, change the course of mighty rivers, leap tall buildings at a single bound, bend steel with their bare hands, and generally don't appear to have any kind of propulsive exhaust as in a rocket or jet. 
The only aspect that I'm interested in is their mechanism of movement from point A to point B with great acceleration without seeming to throw anything out in the opposite direction, which appears to violate Newton's well-known laws of motion. For ease of computation, I'm going to consider an acceleration of 100 g's. They may accelerate faster than this, or very slowly, but slow doesn't interest me. Note here that when they disappear, maybe they're going much faster, or maybe they just bend light to make themselves invisible. 100 g's may not be their limit, but it's far greater than anything we can do. At 1 g, we will go 4.9 meters in the first second, and at the end of that second, we will have a velocity of 9.8 meters per second, about 22 miles per hour. At 100 g's, we will go 490 meters in the first second, that's about three city blocks, and we'll be traveling at 980 meters per second, about 2200 miles per hour. That's cooking. I'll be considering a craft of about 10,000 kilograms, about 22,000 pounds in weight at the Earth's surface. That's about the mass of 10 compact cars, a fairly standard craft as judged by observer reports. The power output can then be computed given the assumption that most of the energy will be invested in the craft and not wasted on a propulsive exhaust. However, if the craft moved by conventional means, according to the laws of physics, that is, ejecting a rapid exhaust in the opposite direction, like some presently unknown radiation or subatomic particle, then most of the energy would be in the exhaust, and the power output would be proportionately greater, maybe much, much greater. The kinetic energy of the craft after one second will then be 0.5 times 10,000 kilograms times 980 meters per second squared equals 4.8 billion joules. Since we've invested 4.8 billion joules of energy into the craft in one second from a dead stop, we've produced energy at the rate of 4.8 billion watts. That's enough to light up 48 million 100 watt light bulbs.